This tutorial is a free preview lesson from our 101 Photoshop for Beginners course. Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me over at RitaPro.com. The following tutorial is a free preview from our 101 Photoshop for Beginners course. And if you're a beginner and want to learn more about Photoshop, I suggest you check out our 101 Photoshop for Beginners course on the website. Click on this video here to see the course trailer or take this coupon code to get a reduced $10 entry today. But for now that's it, let's head right away into the free preview lesson. All right, so right away on the screen here, you guys can see that I still have my workspace. I want to actually remove the whole workspace and only drag out the layers palette. So let's do that first of all. Remove everything, take this to the side, and we can start. Okay, great. So you have your layers palette on your right-hand side, and over here we have all the different type of layers. So I first of all, want to start out just talking about the different type of layers that you get in Photoshop. So first of all, you'll have a just a normal pixel layer. So that's basically just a normal image. And again, a normal pixeled layer. Again, over here on the right hand side, you guys can see the pixeled layer. Let's actually switch this on. So it's just basically a normal image. And you can, yeah, it's a normal pixel layer. Underneath of that, we have a normal background layer. That is again what we discussed earlier. If you create a new document, you always have a background layer. Again, but it's also a pixel layer. It's just white. Okay, so these are pixel layers. Next up, we have adjustment layers. Again, I also showed quickly how to work with adjustments, but more about that in the course still. Um, adjustment layers are again, layers that you can adjust and in order to get an effect or achieve a different look on your image. Okay, and adjustment layers look something like this. So over here, you guys can see in the front is a little bit of an adjustment and a little bit of an icon and underneath behind it is a mask. So again, this is what an adjustment layer looks like. Then up next we have type layers, something like this with just a big T in the front, it's a type layer. Basically anything that you are typing out is a type layer. Then up next we have shape layers. Over here you guys can also see a shape layer. So this little icon over here will be presented in the layer. So you guys can also see it over here and right away know it's just a normal shape layer. Again on this shape layer you can also see it just has one shape included. So yeah, it's just a basic shape layer. On top of that we have smart objects. So basically the last layer system again only smart objects. Later in the course, I'll have a whole class just on smart objects because they are really, really handy and good to work with. So smart objects can also come in with effects and also filter effects, but more about that in the smart object class. Then on top of that, we have here a just a normal pixel layer, but with a mask. So again, it's a normal pixel layer, but there's a mask attached to this layer. Okay, and then on top of that, we have a layer group. So basically a whole new folder, which can have a few layers inside or again, just be on its own, but it would be obviously more um, accurate to have some layers inside. So again, this is what a group looks like. And then over here, we also still have a layer color. So basically this just means this certain layer here in your palette from layers is colored now. Let's also actually open this a bit further and discuss quickly what is what here in your layers palette. Let's start right away on the left hand side with the filter options. So first of all, you guys can see that I have a few of these different layers in here. I'll just switch everything on. And all of these, we have all different type of layers now in Photoshop. If I go now to the filter options and select something from name, I can obviously search by a name. If I just type in here, say type layer, it Photoshop only searches for that layer. So sometimes you have over a thousand layers in a Photoshop file and you need to search for something, then you can also do it here. You can also do the filter options with effects, modes, colors, smart objects, whatever you're looking for, just to narrow things down a bit more. Remember, here's a little button. If you don't have this button active, Photoshop will not search for it. Okay, so these are basically your filter options here. Then up next, let's just get back to kind. Okay, also here kind on the right hand side, you guys can also see here's the filter toggle. Oh, well, that's the filter toggle. But again, you can only select this icon over here. And it will only show you the pixel layers as when currently hovering over it, it'll only show now the pixel layer. So everything that has to do with pixel layer that's currently in my Photoshop file. If I undo this again, 
I can see everything. If I go back to the adjustment button here, just select button, adjustments, so it only shows me the adjustments and so on. The text layer, smart objects, and shape layers and smart objects. Yep, so again, that is up here. All right, let's continue then. We also have layer options here, blending options. So if I just select a layer, so currently you guys can also see it's not active. That is because I have nothing selected. So Photoshop does not know on what, what layer it's currently working on. So I can go to layer color here and now it knows, okay, everything that I do adjustments here now will only affect this normal layer. Or you can also do that to a type layer, adjustment layer, that doesn't matter. Let's go back to layer style. So the top is the layer modes, the blending options. If you select this, more about that also now and later, a few lessons after this, what blending options are, but you can basically choose here from different blending options. Then opacity, how strong you want the master opacity, or again underneath, the fill is the interior opacity. So again, it's a slight difference here and there. Let's actually turn everything off so you guys can see it right away. If I tweak this fill here, I can change the opacity of this layer or again, keep it back to 100 and the same goes for the top opacity as well. It's pretty much the same effect. Sometimes it comes in handy to work with fill instead of opacity. But most of the time I work with opacity. Then again, to lock options here or the whole locking controls, you can lock layers. So for instance, you can also use the first one, which will lock the transparent pixels. Again, to be honest, I have not worked so much with these tools in the whole Photoshop process. Some of them I use, not all. Like these two, I don't find them so useful. Again, the next one here is also to lock just the position. This comes in handy sometimes. So once you selected it, it will lock this image. So nobody can move it around. It will give you an error. The same goes for the Air artboards, you can also lock here and auto prevent the nesting. So this means it's not going to be nested together with other layers. You can just keep it separately again. And also obviously the typical lock layer, as you will always see with the background layers. If a layer is locked over here, you cannot work with it. You cannot do anything with it. It's just completely locked. You will always get an error. So simply just select the unlock button here again and it is out of the locking system again. The same goes for the background layers. I normally, when I open a new document, right away click on this and just get out of the locking layer. Great, then up next, you understand all this locking system. We have obviously the layer down here and you'll have this little eye over here. This means visibility. So you can toggle this on or off in order to see certain layers or to work with certain layers, have certain effects. Okay, so that's super easy to understand. Then on the right hand side, we still have a scroll function here. We only have a few layers now. So normally there would be a ton of layers. Then you'll also have a little bit of a scroll function to go up and down with the layers. Then also here we have obviously in the layer, the thumbnail so that you can have like a little preview. In order to change this, you can just on the layer here on the picture on the thumbnail, click right click and it will take you into some more options just for this layer and for obviously the thumbnails for the layering system. So you can do this as small and then it's really nice and small or you hit right click again, say medium. I'm gonna go with large now so you can see things a bit easier in your layer palette. Then as well, you can clip those to other bounds but I haven't worked so much with this to be honest. I don't need that. And down here are all the colors. So say for instance, you have a few layers that are all the, the same process, then you can give them all an orange color for instance. Let's actually do that. I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and select all of these layers here. You just click the layers and hold shift on the keyboard. Now press right click and say orange. And now right away, this section is most probably about a certain effect and it's all in orange. I can also go back and say no color. Also remember on every single layer, you can always hit right click in order to get into some more options and effects again. Okay, let's continue now at the bottom here. We still have again the group that I talked about. Smart objects we'll cover in a little bit. What are these effects and why do you see it underneath? It's basically you have again your normal smart object layer and underneath you can see the effect that has been applied again with the eye to make it visible or not. So you can just switch it on or off. Then also let's talk about a very, very important point which I haven't mentioned yet. Whatever is at the bottom, it's, you kind of have to imagine it's like a patty on a burger. Whatever is at the bottom, that's what you currently see. When you stack something on top, that's what you currently see. So when you stack something on top, 
you'll always see the top part. So that's how layers also work. So at the moment, we just see the layers group here at the bottom. Let's move this a bit to the side to explain it a bit easier. You guys can see here's the picture and the layers. So I currently see this because this is all switched off with the, with the visibility. Now, if I switch on background layer here, once I switch it on, you'll see now that we only see white. If I go to pixel layer, we only see pixel layer. Then the effect takes in type layer, then the shape layer and so on. Whatever is on top, like you can see here, even if this is typed on the top and now you have again a normal, normal layer over it, once you select it, it will again disappear and you'll only have that layer. So whatever is stacked on top is currently visible, even if the top. Okay, great. Let's also talk a little bit about the buttons down here. First of all, down here, again, layer links. So basically you can link layers together in case you want to move them or unlink certain things. So say for instance, if I want to link the pixel layer with mask with my layer color, I can just with shift again, or command for Windows people, please press control when I say command. So control, these both layers, I want them together to be linked. So they are working together. If I move them, they will always stick together. So I can select the layers and now just simply go down here in order to link these layers. So I'm just gonna hit link. And now they have this little icon here at the back. This means now if I move this, see whatever I do with it, they will always be linked together and the effects or if I move them around. You can also simply just click again to unlink. Great, so that's the little link button down here. Then we also have add style and effects. So like you guys can see here at the moment, the smart object has a effect to it. On the right hand side, you can also open and minimize this. Again to see effects and if you click down here, you'll get to the effect menu. More about that later in the course. Then as well, we also have um, masks. So let's maybe go to just a normal layer color. And if I click on here, I will now create a mask onto this layer. More about mask also later in the course. Again, if I select this, you'll see right away this has been applied now and we have a layer, a mask. Let's do that again. I'll just have the normal layer color selected and right away we have a mask. Again, I'll explain later in the course how to work with masks. I just want you to understand now what a mask layer looks like. Then up next, we have adjustment layers that I showed previously in the lessons already. Down here, we also have adjustments. So you can simply click on here, select an adjustment, and right away, your windows will obviously pop up. But you'll now have a new layer over here. Again, a new adjustment layer. I'm just going to delete this. Then great, up next we have the folder icon down here. You can either just go somewhere randomly into your layers palette and select a folder. So basically clicking down here, create a folder. You can now rename this to maybe, I'm gonna rename it to test. And now I'm able to move layers into this whole area and yes, have everything here sorted in one group layer. I can also click right click and give this a red color. And once we open this, all of these layers again have a red color attached. Also what you can do, what I know mostly do, is I select these layers. Let's just drag them out again. I'll also hit right click, give them no color. Okay, so they are not now in a group. They are also simple stacked alone. So what I do is with shift again, select all the layers or with command, select whatever I need. And then I go back to the group icon here, select it and right away Photoshop puts all of those current layers into a group. That's one way of doing it. Or again, there's another way. Again, I'm referring here back to shortcuts. So basically Photoshop keyboard shortcuts. Let's just drag everything out. I'm gonna delete this group quickly. If I select all these layers again with shift, I'm gonna press now Command and G together. And once I hit Command G, Photoshop knows this is a keyboard shortcut, put this together in a group. Great, so now we already have a new group here. Or I can hit Command Z to do undo that again. So keyboard shortcuts, very essential. Okay, let's remove test. You guys can also see when I just hit delete, things will be deleted. Now, let's get back to the next icon, which is over here. So this is the new layer icon down here. If I select this, you will see right away we have a transparent new layer and a new empty layer. So we can now work on this with brushes, text, whatever we have. More about that also in the course. I just want you to understand this is a new empty layer and that's how you can add more layers as well. 
Then up next is again the dustbin here, self-explanatory. It's again the delete layer. So you can select a certain layer and hit this to delete. Yes, you're sure you want to delete? Yes, and you deleted it. Or like me, you can also just hit backspace on the keyboard and you right away delete layers. So that's a little bit easier for me. The same goes again if you have groups available here and a few layers. You can just select this, delete on the backspace and backspace again, backspace again. So that's how you delete it again. Right, so now you know all the little tools over here. Last thing that we still have is the layer menu at the top. So again, a few more options here, which we also most probably cover in the course still throughout. Again, this is just like a right-click function in order to work quicker again with your workflow. So something like new layer is also available here. It's also available in a keyboard shortcut or down here again. So like I said earlier in the lessons also, many different techniques and ways how to speed up your workflow or work differently. Again, you guys can also see here, duplicate layer, delete the layer, export, new group, etc. It's again a complete new layer menu here. Great, so now you have seen a free preview from our Photoshop beginner course. Again, click right here to join and also don't forget about the coupon code. So yeah, thanks again guys for watching. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. Yeah, and you're still here and interested in some more stuff. So first of all, maybe hit us up with a like if you really enjoyed this content. Also subscribe and share. And if you want to download my free Tronics Design Media Package, have a look down below in the description. Leave your feedback as well. Let me know what you think about this tutorial. And if you want to see some more Photoshop beginner tutorials, have a look. I've listed some free previews here as well.